tuning in to our next in our series of Nawi Talk International. Today's topic, we're going to be going over the Nawi app, the current app, as well as some of the future enhancements that are coming on board. Uh, we have the developer and our own diving expert from South Africa, Quinton de Boer, going to be speaking along with Angelo, our expert on these topics as well. So uh, what we're going to be doing today's topic. Yeah, Angelo's smiling. <laughs> no. Um, but the three of us are gonna to try to host this today. We've got Madison in the background. Uh, just a quick reminder to everybody, these topics we're gonna to be running uh, quite frequently with a different subject every time. And they're very pointed, very particular targeted ideas. So today it's all about the app. So if you have any questions during the seminar, notice in the bottom of your screen is a Q and A. Please place them there, not in the chat. Uh -huh. The Q&A, we'll be addressing them um, during and definitely after Quinton's presentation. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Angelo to take it from here. And Angelo, go ahead. Hey guys, thanks so much uh, for uh, participating in today's uh, Now We Talk. Uh, thanks, Bill. Um, as we move this thing forward, as we move this needle, I know that every single week we're kind of trying to, we're building uh, presentation here we're building a foundation where we started initially with our uh, why now we talk our, our why now we presentation what separates now from other organizations what what other entities and then we brought in the uh, David Winford who uh, talked about um, uh, topics on how to be a profitable center a dive center and how to be profitable on utilizing the pro uh, winning the the, uh, the profit margin um, Ironically, with David's uh, presentation, he offered and extended a, um, an invitation to consult with him um, to where he would spend one hour and find, I think it was $10,000 of, of potential revenue in your business. We had one person, one store out of the 130 that were on the last webinar, we had one store that went ahead and took advantage of that uh, opportunity. And in that presentation with David, that uh, particular facility found over $100,000 of potential revenue that was untapped. They did another follow-up session. Um, and then from there, they've agreed to work together to move forward to kind of implement systems and work on, on how to implement systems and how to improve the business. The key thing that we, get, we have here in my, since uh, coming into this position at Nowway Worldwide, you know, I'm looking at different types of things of how to improve our business. And one of the things that I notice is that the app, which is a, the Nowe app, which is a vital tool in the toolbox to help all of our instructors to help our facilities and how it is an underperformer, how it's being underutilized by a vast majority of the membership. And I see it as something that needs to be, it has to be a mainstay, it has to be a part of the backbone of your teaching your classes. In our follow-up presentations down the road, we're gonna have a presentation on how to build a smart form. Whereas that will, when you, when you sign up a student, a smart form will go to your potential new student where it'll have all of these reminders and bells and whistles that are all downloadable to where you're able to go and integrate this into your class. So the, the Nowi app is a massive tool that is not being utilized and in an attempt to try to reverse this or try to make this, uh, to create more awareness, we've invited Quentin DeBoer from South Africa, who is the architect of this, mind you. So and we have several topics that, you know, that he's going to follow. He's gonna share his screen. Quentin's gonna take it over and then we'll kind of revert back. There has been some questions that were, that were, that were sent in pre, uh, ahead of time that we will address as we go. But with that right now, I wanna turn it over to Quentin to kind of, just to kind of refamiliarize ourselves with such a powerful tool. The most interesting thing about this app is that First off, Nawi was, I believe, one of the, Quentin, correct me if I'm wrong, but Nawi was one of the first organizations to actually introduce an app. And secondly, we are one of the only organizations right now that are continually using app that has a, a positive, just great reviews. So I think the, the app is just extremely uh, well-received, well-constructed, it's easy to maneuver through. I know as I'm using app in the field all the time, I find it very, it's very useful. So with that, I mean, if you go ahead and share your screen, pull up some of those topics so that we can kind of go ahead and, you know, as we're rolling into the new phase of this app, you know, with the new, with the new topics and the new um, 
features and benefits that are going to be down that are going to be uh, coming up here the first quarter. Why don't you go ahead and show us what we're talking about? Um, thanks, Angela. Firstly, and then uh, to all the attendees, thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for your interest in the Naui app as well. Um, just to add on to what Angela said, uh, we have got great reviews at the moment, although it's very basic. There is a big release planned for end of January, uh, quite a significant release. And yeah, looking forward to taking you through some of the new features that is going to be available, um, as well as the current features and how you can utilize that. Okay, I'm gonna start by sharing my screen. So just uh, before we get into it completely, can I ask that uh, for the guys, hopefully all of the guys on the call has got the Naui app downloaded. If you haven't got the Naui app downloaded, I ask that you actually go and download it. It's available on the App Store as well as on the Google Play Store. Just search for the Naui app. Um, just type Naui, uh, download it because it might be worthwhile actually following us while we go through the presentation um, to actually just make sure that we got this covered. Okay, so firstly, um, how to utilize the app. Um, again, uh, of how to use the app. Um, guys, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Again, as mentioned, it's available on the Google Play Store as well as the, um, what's it, the Apple App Store. Uh, there was one question that was submitted prior to this asking why we don't actually have it on uh, Windows Mobile. Um, sorry, maybe just uh, quickly while I'm at this point to address that specific question. Uh, Microsoft has actually announced, uh, s sort of announced that they stop all support for Windows Mobile as of January 2020. Okay, so there's no, there's actually no use for us to put some effort into it and actually release it on that platform as well. Uh, the reason being is they've, um, Windows Mobile is completely coming to an end uh, and that is, uh, that is migrating over to actually Android at the moment. Um, also, when you guys install it, um, important to note that you would need a profile on core you are able to, to create the profile directly from the app or use your current core credentials to log into the app. If you've got any difficulty logging into the app, might get a message and stuff, it might be something on the profile. Again, I would highly recommend you just contact Naui HQ or one of the service centers. They'll be able to help you in a few seconds to rectify if there's anything on the profile. Okay, um, moving into some of the new features of the app. So I'm going to go in here. Um, what can you guys expect on the new features coming out in January? Firstly, a complete reskin of the app. Okay, what do we mean of that? A much more mobile like look and feel for the entire app. Um, there is going to be uh, very, very significant changes in terms of basically all functionality that was inside the app that you required a username and password for. Some of them that didn't make sense to have inside of the app is going to move prior to login. So it's going to move into public space. So you don't even require actual logon or a profile in the specific app of in the app to actually access that. More specifically, that would be locator function for members and affiliates, um, events and use of various Naui that's available to the public. Also, once you've logged in, you're going to be presented with either based on your, on your profile yourself, if you're a diver, a member of an affiliate, a dashboard. Now, the dashboard will cover off stuff like the current courses that's being taught or that's enrolled in, number of certifications issued per type in the year, number of, of overall certifications issued um, for entire sort of for all period of time. And... If you're a diver, the next milestone. So if you, typical example would be a suggestion is if you're a master diver, the next course that you might be interested in is a Naui assistant instructor or dive master. Okay. Social media integration, that goes, that kind of tie hand in hand with what we're going to get to in two more points in terms of the Naui digital recognition program that's going to be launched. Um, so you're going to be able to directly from the app make various postings to various social media pages as well as access Naui's official social media pages uh, as well as the new Naui forum. Uh, you'll be able to access that directly from the app. Uh, enhanced membership resources. What we're talking about there is various languages. Um, this on one of the points on the languages. 
should you have a preferred language that would be set up in courts based on location, you would also be able to basically select it in your profile in the app itself. You'll be able to select your default uh, modified language and then enhanced membership resources, which we've broken down. You would not have to access the entire uh, instructor guide just to access a specific section. The general idea is here for an instructor, should he be out presenting a course and he might want to access a specific chapter that he can quickly pull up that specific chapter and actually uh, display it on screen from the mobile device or have it in hand readily available. Digital recognition program. Now this is something I'm personally quite excited about. This would be based on various um, various features so number of dives is obviously going to be driven by the app itself in terms of number of dives logged in the logbook uh, your certification level you've achieved versus um, what is available what is the next one and it's going to guide you through what is available as well typical example is should you log your first dive you'll get a nice message saying first dive logged in the Naui app should you have logged 50 dive you'll have a 50 dives logged should you get a scuba diver qualification, you would get scuba diver qualification and that would open up your advanced or various speciality badges that you can earn from there. Okay, this is also something that if we do promotional items like a wreck diving course, we can utilize. Uh, we're gonna have direct messaging. You, should, you will have the ability to basically message students that is assigned to you very very importantly to note that it's only students that's assigned to you obviously we can't go and let you message the entire student database so if a student is doing a course with you they would be able to kind of you would be able to message them and they would be able to message back uh personalized alerts uh yeah we're talking about Hey, Quentin, let me ask you a question let's back up to the digital recognition program okay so <clears throat> Kind of exp let me let me let me understand that a little better. So we're going to there's going to be milestones if I heard you correctly. That's so great. There'll, there'll be milestones that are that are established. So members as they achieve these like goals like awards like as there's like you know accomplishments, then they'll be able to track these accomplishments through the digital recognition program. Correct. That is correct. So you'll basically earn a digital badge for a very specific accomplishment. Uh, we will display the next badges that is available that to be earned, but it's basically going to be a progression system that builds upon basically your progression. The idea is to make the app and we'll get to it when we get to the various specific tools that's available based on your certification. But the idea is that the app really becomes a companion app. The, the app really grows with you as your diving career grows along with it. So in the digital recognition, where, okay, in the digital recognition program is um, that, is, is that where it's gonna be like the log book? Is that, is, that, is that essentially a log book? No, the log book will be separately functioned from this. You will have a dashboard with various badges that you earn, like an award system, like a, like a recognition or a trophy case, for lack of a better word. Understand. So yeah. now just going up one other line, it says enhance membership resources. Now, what's the definition of that again? Okay, so again, if you go and look at our current membership resources, you can access as a member. So let's just take the member side of it. You can access the various instructor guides, the SMPs, all the rest. This one would be a little bit smarter in terms of just displaying if your language is Spanish. It will just display the Spanish, uh, basically SMPs, uh, as well as instructor guides. It will also give you the ability to access various chapters in the specific instructor guide without having to download the entire instructor guide. So all of this is all of this will be accessible right at your right at your hand rather than downloading on a PC or, you know, having Karen, you'll have it all that all this, all of this will be right at your hand, right at your handheld, you know, yes. out field, making decisions live, you'll have live, uh, basically live, inter live information, you'll have your S&P, which is right there with you out there in the field with you, all the forms that are that accompany the S&P, everything will be with you at the, at the, at, the, at that moment's touch. That is correct. It is, however, important to note, once you access it the first time we build it in, that it will then go to local storage, okay? But for the first time downloaded, you would require internet connection. So, and I remember you saying this, 
that we, we have access to the material even though we don't have access to the internet. If you've, if you've synchronized it the first time, again, it, it, it would need to pull it down from basically the server the first time. Uh, once it's been pulled down and then stored on local storage, you would, ac you would have access to it as well. That is a very important thing to note. And I know we discussed this previously on the phone as well. Uh, maybe just as a takeaway point for all the users as well. Once you've logged into the app, if you stayed logged into the app and you don't log out, you would be able to actually access your certification cards without the internet connection. It is available. The moment you log out, however, uh, it does require you to then again log into the server and resync. All right, so that's a very, very key note right there. Stay logged in. So if you go to Bora Bora or someplace where there's lack of internet, you know, you still have access to your digital information. That is correct. Okay. All right, man. So I'm sorry to uh, slow you no. down right there, but you were up on, I think you were right there at messaging and then you were going. So messaging, if I hear you correctly, messaging, you'll be able to uh, communicate with anybody that's in your network within the app, your students, things of that nature. Correct? That is correct. So if a student okay. has activated a course and they've activated a course uh, for yourself, okay, you would be able to message the student, maybe follow up with the student, uh, last minute arrangements in terms of, listen, I'm going to the pool, just letting them know. So it's really, really a valuable tool to actually just download the app. Um, it's a very nice way to stay in touch with your students as well. On the personalized alerts, now what is it, where, 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 where are we going with this? Okay, personalized alert, uh, might be your birthday, you know, happy birthday from Nawi. you know, um, it's a very, very key thing. <laughs> we might need to track and follow up just a personalized offering. You might have done 25, uh, let's say, rec dives, and you might now be eligible to, you know, why you've done 25 rec dives, but you haven't done a rec dive, uh, what's a speciality course? Why don't we maybe make a suggestion and say, listen, we see this is the type of diving you're into. Maybe consider a wreck diving course and maybe give a few suggestions as to where to go and do a wreck diving course. So let me ask you that. Okay. So on the personalized alerts, now <clears throat> Angelo Fiore has trained Quentin DeBoer. So I'm out here. Who gets the alert? The instructor gets the alert or Quentin gets the alert. How does that work? Uh, well, the, we can set it up both ways. The moment we've envisaged it is that the diver actually gets the alert. So it would be awesome if the instructor got the alert too, because it would be a, it would be a driver to the next level, you know, as a reminder, because as we certify a large group of people, you know, we start to, you know, you lose, you lose uh, communication. So this can be, you know, something of a little reminder. And I also think it's pretty important that I think you said something about birthdays that are involved in air too. So obviously going back to that little, just that little personal touch, those things that keep you in touch with your students, with your stores, with your affiliates, you know, it, it enhances the ability to take on to the next sale, to the next student, to the next level. Is that correct? That, that is exactly the idea. The idea is to actually have this app as a business tool, a business enhancement tool that provides you with all the various, you know, necessary sort of features to stay in touch with your student, to drive business, to create, you know, more courses, to create the vibe, you know, to get people excited again about the various courses and about diving. Maybe just to on that point, then uh, jump back to point number three, the dashboards. Okay, there you would also be able to see how many types of students you've trained for a specific course, specifically, uh, who is that you'll be able to drill down, who is that student, which again becomes basically your I was, I was your, your, leads, your, leads, your leads database. You've just now presented, you've maybe done, you've maybe done about 60 scuba diver students in the last year. You know, now you're looking at presenting an advanced course. Who should you be advertising to? Well, the reality is every single person that's at that stage to then is ready to take an advanced course. So your 60 previously certified scuba diver students. So that's a pretty awesome feature right there. And back into the dashboard by allowing people to have access, allowing instructors and members levels to, I mean, we get it all the time at Naui headquarters. People will call down to Naui headquarters and they want to, hey, how many people did I certify this year? Or so if I hear you correctly, within that dashboard information at readily available, people have a running count of all the people that they certified 
and all the courses that they took from them people? Is that a yearly thing or an over or is it a uh, total thing? It's actually both. So uh, we'll limit it on yearly, but you would have the ability to then filter of all time and then get a record of that um, as well. Um, obviously, just very important to note here and more specifically, this is now for the guys, not necessarily in the uh, under the HQ sort of service center. The reason being is I want to just specifically note, this is everything done through core. Okay, so it's very, very important. Okay, hence the fact that we're also getting the guys quite, you know, in the various regions, very keen to get the guys on core. Hence the fact that we're very, very, you know, we're motivating them to get on core because if it's done outside of core, this won't be in the app. Right okay. on. So register your student. Okay, and this is why it's important that when we go through through the through the smart form process by making sure that we're offering the app, making sure everything is processed through core. This way, all this information is readily available to maximize the efficiency of this app, correct? That is correct. Um, also, we'll get to it now. Uh, we are gonna start utilizing QR codes much more in the app. Uh, various stages where we'll utilize QR codes, the ability to sign the logbooks, uh, jumping around a little bit, but let's just, ability to sign the logbook as either a diver a member, it will pick up the various different member type, either a dive master or an instructor, because then training would actually consider it as, val as valid training logs. The ability to copy a log across. So if you've logged the dive and let's say you and me did the dive together, I can copy the log across without having to sit there and fill it in. Also the ability to use QR codes to activate various your courses, okay? Abilities to also add a stage, and this might not be in this, version, but drive the guys to the affiliates, um, you know, have a QR code in store, which they can scan, verify that they've actually visited that affiliate. Um, again, from an affiliate perspective, you can see what is the divers coming through your door, what's the type of products they are doing, what's the type of courses they are doing. Um, yeah, so generally just getting a little bit more clever with our data and analytics. So <clears throat> enhancing Okay, with the QR code, utilizing a dashboard, it's basically functioning almost like a CRM system. That's exactly that. You know, the idea is to, you know, maybe not with all the notes and bells and whistles of every single interaction, but exactly that. You know, if you, you apply your mind and you use the various dashboards and stuff, there's some clever stuff you can do. Obviously, you know, as we move forward, the idea would be to educate our members on exactly how to do that. Right on. So, all right, let's go. I think we're down here at the enhanced diver. We have a lot of. Go ahead, Bill. I'm sorry, Bill. We, no, it's okay. We have a lot of questions about the logbook. Is there ability to upload through a CSV or through some other file uh, previous dives? Okay. Um, at the moment, so maybe just um, at the moment, Bill, uh, with the enhanced logbook, and I'll cover what the enhanced logbook exactly is. That is not going to be available right off the bat. It's not a difficult thing to do. It's not in scope at the moment to upload via CSV file. The general idea would be to add a stage, maybe look at bringing in Bluetooth, any computer, dive computer with a Bluetooth to sync directly to the app without the ability to actually, uh, you know, the need, not the ability, but the need to upload via CSV file. Right on. Um, all right. So, the Enhanced Diver Toolkit. Let's talk about that because I know that's where we were just kind of cruising into. I think we kind of touched a little base. I think we understand um, the, uh, I mean, you got a lot of exciting stuff up there on the upper half of this thing. I mean, I'm really super excited about the dashboard, the capabilities, you know, as you're, as you're heading out, the communication, the personalizing messaging, you know, all of the alerts that are in there. I mean, utilizing that dashboard tool as a communication to kind of enhance your ability to take that person to the next level, to the next sale, to the next, wherever it may be, uh, to create a network. It's basically utilizing, is giving, you're giving the ability to create a network. Let's hear about this uh, enhanced diver toolkit. Okay, so just before we go into the toolkit, I think it's important and maybe the guys that's got the app open in front of them to kind of, uh, firstly, let's just talk about what's currently in the app. So currently in the app, there is the ability to access um, sort of the, what's it, the ODI GTML uh, diver planning. And there's some questions around that as well, which we'll address just now. Uh, and as well as an automated dive uh, 
dive table calculator. Maybe very important to note, if your student download it and they log into the app and they tell you, listen, their app looks different, uh, they, they, on, they're not, uh, they not actually, uh, what is it? They're not on something. They, it really looks different. Okay. We don't give them access to that unless they are certified. The reason for that is being old school. Now we, we want them to understand the tables to once they understand the tables, the moment you certify them, those two tools becomes available. Okay. And that's a principle we're going to have to just keep in the back of our head when we're discussing the next ones as well. Okay. So, so wait a second. let me stop you right there. So if I hear you correctly, so somebody who's like a junior snorkeler, all right, I don't have to worry about them learning about the oxygen exposure or the EANX calculator or something. They've got, they don't have access to it, but doesn't exist in their world at this stage. So hundred <laughs> percent, you know, we don't have to necessarily look, it's not going to be a bad thing if they actually got the knowledge, but yeah, at this stage, they, they don't need access to it. The reason being is the moment you certify them, we give them access to the tools. Obviously for instructor, once you become an instructor that is overridden, you've got access to that. Okay. But maybe just keep that in the back of your mind, because like I said, as you progress through your your diving career and there's various avenues that open up for you. So will the app open up various functionalities to yourself, more specifically technical. Uh, we're not going to make the technical tools and the planning tools available to people that is not technically certified. Okay. Obviously, you know, number one, from a liability perspective and number two, just, you know, it's nice getting that qualification and then going into the app and seeing, Oh, I've got all these new tools available for myself. Um, so technical, what we, what's under technical, a little bit of planning, some of the gas laws in there, some of the just overall, you know, um, turn bar, what we're going to use, um, various calculations on the gas technician. That's more of the gas blending type of formulas in there. So if you are a gas blender and you're filling cylinders for various expedition types dives, that will be your toolkit that's going to help you say exactly, help you with your calculations. Even if you just maybe use it as a verification, you can use that. Public safety diving toolkit, again, type of stuff there is lift bag calculations would be included there as well as maybe, um, you know, decontamination formulas, that type of stuff. Again, not something that a normal scuba diver would actually utilize or use or even be aware of. Free diver, free diver toolkit, uh, calculating where your safety should be. Um, some uh, nice, uh, you know, breathe up, um, breathe down exercises in terms of, you know, oxygen, uh, CO2 tables as well. Recording your personal bests in there. Um, first aid, the various first aid. If you're a first aid instructor, all that stuff you use, a metronome to help you with the, uh, help you with the CPR education uh all the slates access to that um lastly right. then so hang on a second there uh quentin so the cool thing about if i hear you correctly about the enhanced diver toolkit all right it is and uh, the integrating it with the app it is giving you the ability to grow the app That's grows it. with you that is exactly it. And that's, a, so the app is, uh, which was quite interesting. So we've, we had a review of, uh, I think it was Diver Magazine. It was a very good review of the app. They did say it was very basic. The, the interesting thing is they didn't have access to half of the functionality that is in there. You know, so again, um, yeah, as you grow, as you get various certifications, there is certain functionality that is unlocked for you in the app as you move along. Interesting. So let me just ask you right there. I'm going to stop you right there because I got to answer this question um, <clears throat> from Anesti uh, Vega. Uh, he asks that he wanted to provide some quick feedback as we were walking through logging into the app. He attempted to update the address in the app. And since he moved recently and in the app, he, he was unable to update the street address, but the city and zip code kept defaulting back to an old address. He ended up having to log into the into Nowi on a laptop browser to update it and have it taken into the system. Does that make sense? Um, I would actually want him to just send me the version of the phone he's using. That sounds like a caching thing, uh, to be quite honest. That the memory is uh, that it's that it's kind of grabbing the values that was in there, and uh, you know the phone remembers it. 
Um, but yeah, if you can send me, um, Angela, if you can get his details, if you can send me the specific phone as well as the version of the operating system he's on, we can surely have a look at that. Right on. Appreciate that. Um, so go ahead. So with the first aid stuff, we've got, um, we've got some information there. I know that you are, um, um, there's a lot, I mean, that's an ever evolving thing. So that's constantly being updated that you're carrying into the app and then the e-learning integration. Yeah. So, so from the, from, yeah, from the e-learning integration, I'm sure most of the people on this call as the instructors would know, uh, we are rolling out new e-learning. Uh, it's available for scuba diver and for nitrox at the moment already. Uh, in terms of the e-learning, everything on the new platform would be accessible via the app as well. Okay. So you would be able to launch that e-learning for that specific courses available on the new system. And as the new, as the other courses come online, more and more of them would be available to launch uh, directly from the app. Okay. Right on. Um, as the more courses come online, you'll be able to launch that through the app as well. Yeah. So that's the LMS system, uh, right the new LMS e-learning system. All right. Is there another page on this one? Uh, there's actually not. So I'm going to go back one slide. And just to, um, I think we've already kind of covered the user language, uh, you know, in terms of they'll have the ability. So the app will firstly pick up, uh, you know, which country they come in. We've got a sort of a default language for that country. If they want to override it, they would be able to override it in their profile in the app, which will then store locally. And that would be their preferred language when coming in. Um, I think we've also touched on how the certification levels will trigger what is available in the app, various functionality. So we've already touched on that. Ways you can use the app to teach more effectively and profitably. Um, again, uh, guys, uh, maybe just have a look at currently, currently what's in the app. Um, the dive tables uh, is in there, various forms of calculators and stuff as well. Um, I've seen it used very, very effectively with instructors, uh, you know, while they're in the class with their students, asking them to, you know, take it out, go through, you know, the various tables if they haven't got their tables there specifically when they're doing a MOD calculation and they're busy with a nitrox class, maybe just taking them through it, uh, you know, once they understand it, showing them how effective it is and how fast it is to actually just utilize the tools with the various sliders and you get an answer in a split second. Um, Sorry, I'm just reading through this. Uh, ways you can use the app to teach more effective profitably. Uh, also just uh, obvious, I think I don't have to explain to anybody in this call since uh, I'm assuming the majority is instructors and members. The digital only is a much more, uh, it's, a cheap, it's cheaper than the, the premier. It's also made the ability worldwide to get product to the guys uh, a lot faster. Uh, you know, you're not sitting around waiting for it. You can literally have your student up and running within a few minutes uh, and they're in a way and busy with their course already. So just from a profit percentage wise, uh, it's, it makes sense to go digital. Uh, it's very effective and it's a lot faster. Um, okay. That uh, flows into the reducing of costs and making it your teaching competitively priced and profitable as well. Uh, again, Digital is a lot cheaper. Maybe to mention to the guys as well, um, I had this incident this weekend where I actually lost my phone. I was completely lost. Uh, Friday, my phone died on me completely. I only got it resolved about a half an hour ago. Um, but again, nice thing about this is it's not like a wallet where you lose uh, plastic C cards. Just download the app again, log in with the profile and all your digital cards is available and you're ready to go. Um, so you can't think, really, uh, let me stop you right there because I mean, I noticed the, you know, one of the things that I want to, um, address right now is I know that we're all into the business. Everybody loves a plastic C card, but you know, as we, um, as we evolve, okay, I know that we're in the business of selling C cards, whatever it is, but we also have to, you know, look at the footprint that we're leaving. You know what I'm saying? There is, you know, the, the, you know, this type of an image that we're presenting, you know, when we travel, I think for the most part, when you ask a person or the average individual, you know, um, you know, how many cards do you travel with? I think you always hear like maybe two cards. I travel with my advance card and my nitrox card. I travel with my, you know, nobody really travels with a rescue card 
or you know whatever it's something to that effect but they'll always travel with a, a, a card that's comfortable to their i guess you know they're only traveling with two cards the cool thing about having the app is the fact that you have access in your digital information with your entire certification history and i think that's a mindset that you know whereas people can start utilizing or getting into that mindset to whereas you know travel with your with this with the app um have your history with you so this way you know it's all it's readily accessible information um well, maybe to add on to that, Angela, let's be honest. How many times have you forgotten your C card at home or, uh, or your lockbook? Okay. Never. <laughs> Angela is perfect, okay. so am I. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's all good. But they're not, they're not like to I ask I'm constantly you. traveling without my C card. So I'm, I'll go to resorts or some of them. Hey, man, pull up that nowy.org website. That's my name. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, but I, but I think realistically, and how many times have you have, how many times have you traveled without your phone? Never. Okay. Never. That's it. <laughs> That's exactly it. So, um, you know, also, uh, maybe just, uh, the last one, how to dive planner. So the guys are referring to the ODI GTML dive planner, the new dive planner format. Um, uh, the, the training is out of the training department, more specifically Terence's uh, brainchild. And um, guys, if you actually had a look at it, how many of you guys, I'd like to challenge everyone in this call, you know, it takes you five minutes to go through that planner and we are going to give the ability to mail it out the results of that once you've done with the planning, but it takes you five minutes to go through there. And in that five minutes, I'm sorry, but I have not seen a recreational sort of student instructor plan a dive to that extent you know even if they take half an hour to plan a dive which we all know doesn't really happen but to that extent i mean how many how many open water students do you know that's going to come out and know what their cns percentage is you know know what their otus is you know know what their gas consumption is know exactly what the end letter group is you know, all prior to the dives and it takes five minutes. So imagine for a split second, the liability shift there, you know, nobody can, nobody can uh, sort of accuse you for not planning the dive, looking at it. I mean, it even goes into exposure protection. Yes, it's just a recommendation, but I mean, you can prove that that's the type of level of thinking and planning you applied prior to your dive before getting into the water. So yeah, I mean, uh, from a liability perspective, I'd like to challenge any, uh, I'd like to somebody to show me any other organization that gives you the tools to in five minutes plan it that you are fully covered in every single aspect of a dive. I mean, that's an actual, <clears throat> I think that's a really cool statement right there. You know, it's a profound statement actually, because, you know, back in the military, when we were planning stuff, you know, we always looked at it from 95% of it was planning, 5% of it was actually diving. You know, so, and that's, a, and, and by having a, an asset like this available to you, I really think that, you know, we're always hearing about diver training, sacrificing diver training or whatever it is. We are giving you the accessibility. We're giving you the information. The, they're giving you all the assets within the application to go ahead, within the NAWI app, to go ahead and refresh yourself, constantly using this stuff to challenge your stuff and to make the, just to learn all the information gathering the knowledge of all of the things that you've achieved on that dive, how your body was reacting, things of that nature, correct? That is correct. Um, and I mean, um, again, like I said, it's a recommendation. We're not saying it's the be all and end all. We're not saying that nothing can happen on the dive. We're just saying to you that, listen, you have not planned a dive so thoroughly ever before in your life and it takes five minutes to go through there. So I'd like to challenge the guys that's got the app in front of them, the instructors, Go in there, run through the tool, see how fast it is, and just see what what amount of information you get out of there with very minimal input. Um, so I think can you address that? Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so, sorry, yeah. Can you address uh, uh, blending as far as a tool? Well, basically it's going to be, so let's say you want to create a, you know, you want to create a 72, let's go weird, 72% nitrox mix. Okay. Or a, you know, 1680 trimix, you know, um, this tool is going to give you, this tool is going to give you the recommendation as to, you know, 
uh, partial pressure blending, uh, you know, firstly, top it up to a, what's it, uh, 500, oh, no, I'm talking, sorry, I'm thinking PSI and I'm talking bar. You're going to top it up to 70 bar uh, helium. Then you're going to top it up with oxygen of another 20 bars, end results 90 bar, and then the rest you're going to top up with air. You know, it's going to give you that calculations to be able to perform the filling and the gas blending. So let me ask you this, Bill. I know, are you on the, are you looking at some of the Q and A's right there, Bill? Yes, I'm answering them as we go and throwing some out that I need help with. Yes. Yeah, I've got a, uh, I've got a, there's an interesting, I think that Steve Monk is asking a question right here. And I think that's a, a, a pretty good one. And I also think that, um, uh, what's his name there? Uh, Deadpool was asking one down there very quickly about integrating the medical forms and everything on the, uh, the, the liability of medical forms. Is that going to be available through the app as well? Um, so, okay. So quick answer, Angelo, is we would like it to be available on the app. That is a generalized, uh, you know, with all the privacy regulations coming out at this stage, where exactly to store it and if it's allowable at this stage, that, that is where the question comes in at this stage. We would like it to be, we're investigating storing it local on the actual, um, on the device itself, so that a member can choose when he wants to share it, okay, and that it actually does not get stored uh, in a centralized database, which obviously has various issues that's great. Being in a country which has got a law, you know, Poppy talking about yeah. Europe, GDPR, uh, it becomes difficult, so. I mean, so looking at Steve Monk right here, he said, you know, if students don't get access to the tables on the app until they are certified, how can you integrate the tables on the app with the digital only package? Okay, so just to correct that, they do have access to the tables, okay? That's the manual tables. They don't have access to the automated dive table app, which gives you the end results with featuring it. So they do still have access to the to the manual tables, so the physical manual tables, they do still have access to that from the start. Right on. Both RGBM as well as the NAWI tables. Gotcha. Uh, let me see here. Bill, you see any other questions in? I saw, I saw one up there about a uh, question about utilizing the app to blend tanks in the store. Yes, <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one we. That's the one we were referring to. So it would give you the calculations. Would give you the calculation. Yeah. Yeah, it would give you the calculations. I mean, it's you're not going to be able to just realistically. You're not going to be able to plug it into some sort of analyzer at this stage, and you know, it does it for you. But it does give you the calcs. So. Right on. Bill, you see anything else in there? Yeah, I'm looking at one uh, right now about um, having access to the different. Uh, logbooks will the instructor be able to see the students logbook i know we did cover about that they we'd be able to sign it for them based on technology and we can share the it back and forth would that it would that be the same answer as looking being able to look and see how they're filling out their logbook um so uh, that's an interesting question that's not been raised before we can certainly look into it what has been raised before is People asking, they want to see how many dives the students, a very recent conversation I had, the a number of dives the students do, that we certainly can look at. But um, yeah, this is, this is interesting. We'll have to investigate it. I can't see it being a problem. Again, just borderlining on any privacy issues there might be in terms of, you know, what data is captured in the logbook. Gotcha. Um... One, one thing that's not in the questions, and I'm quite surprised because it did come up to me um, previously in one of my own classes with one of my students, and, it, and then I had an instructor who was listening, was they were asking about the liability associated with it. And I said, personally, I think using the dive planner mitigates liability because what I'm doing with my students is at the end of their course, again, the app doesn't replace my lecturing, it enhances it or is a buddy to it. So when I'm teaching the, the dive planning, I actually take my phone and I use it and I send it up to the TV and uh, we plan the dives that they're about to do that's on whatever, say Saturday morning. I can then print them off. They sign them. I have them put in. They've actually showed that they know how to use the dive planner and they know what they're doing. So there's ways of mitigating liability with it. So not only is it going to save some time, me as a Canadian and I'm sure with Quinton as well, 
uh, being in South Africa, having to ship things around the world can be extremely expensive, time consuming. You have to pre-order things where with the digital, I'm saving money. I'm mitigating liability all at the same time by using some of these features. So to me, that was a big thing. So um, again, it wasn't a question, but I'm surprised it wasn't. So yeah. um, maybe also just add on to that. I mean, uh, Bill, 100% agree with you, but I mean, also the ability to actually certify your student and they have proof in their hands before they walk out the door. You know, they don't have to wait around for a certification card. You know, it's immediate. Um, and I mean, that's what we're going to and that's what people are demanding these days. They want that immediate gratification and proof that, you know, they've been certified. Um, maybe just to answer John Mark as well. John Mark, you're asking if metric and imperial will be available. It will be available throughout everything in the app. It's actually already available. You can set it uh, that everything's that's in the app already. You can go and set it in your profile. You can change either metric or imperial. Interesting. All right. Um, There's a question about uh, certifications being fully integrated between core and the app. Um, uh, the answer is if actually go ahead, Quentin, I'll let you answer that. But they're asking, I've had a few different versions of the question. Yeah, and are, sorry, I'm just how, how that works on both. Yeah, Daryl's asking, are all certifications and such going to be fully integrated? By this, I mean, my instructor credentials can only be seen using core. That's not correct. Um, so instructor is seen as a, so let me just explain that uh, for Daryl. Daryl, if you've got the app in front of you, go to membership and then uh, right at the top, it's going to see it's going to say view credential card. Now your instructor certification is actually a credential card. It's not a certification card. Gotcha. Yeah. Another uh, version of that same question is okay. people were asking, sorry? No, yeah, no, um, uh, other questions that are very similar to that include the fact that if it's a non, like we've all taken other courses when we're, and perhaps it's a different agency, how do we get that on core? And the answer is you need to talk to your instructor who's in turn going to talk to the service center they're dealing with. If you can prove, and again, I'm speaking on behalf of training, not on behalf of Angelo and Quinton and I, but on behalf of training, um, that's, that's always been a thing. You prove your qualifications, it can get put on core, and then it comes over, and you, you want to make sure that you have that qualification within NAWI. Again, these are NAWI qualifications, not other agency, right? We can only uh, verify your NAWI uh, qualifications. Yeah, but 100%, uh, well, maybe just to, from a service center side, I can maybe comment on that as well. If they provide us with the proof of that certification, it's a recognized agency, it, it shouldn't be a problem. Interesting. Okay. You see uh, Jean Marks one about uh, leader tanks as well as for that's the, tanks? that's the metric uh, that that should have been cubic foot and that's the he corrected it that's the metric and imperial question so i'm gonna oh i thought so but i wanted to make sure i didn't miss anybody okay yes um maybe just also for um just to close that question out on the certifications every single certification on that's uh, that's displayed on core is available on the app uh, that's kind of, uh, it's, it shares a database, a common platform. So yeah, it, they can't differ. And then, uh, obviously you got Eric right there asking about the RGBM decode planner on the app as well. So the RGBM deco planner at this stage is not, uh, it's not kind of planned to put any deco software in there at the moment. I know it's something that various people has kind of asked for and stuff. Um, but yeah, that is obviously quite significant to put a deco planner in there. It's not something that uh, might not be there in the future. All I can say it's not scoped at the moment. Understand. Um, Got uh, a question about uh, on if somebody's planning nitrox dives with the EN calculator give you the mod when you change the percentage of the O2. It does? So They're asking, simple, yeah, it does, correct? Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's a simple one. So there's it a does. slider, you can change the percentage of the O2. Currently, because it's for recreational, it's locked to 40%. Uh, again, that's one of the stuff that changes. If you have a technical qualification, it does allow you to go all the way up to 100% on the new version that's going to be released, okay? But it will still be locked to 40% if you're only a recreational diver. Okay. 
Then Christopher Shannon's do the, uh, do the credentials on the app expire? First aid, for example. Absolutely. Um, it will actually come up with a, com uh, with a stamp saying expired across the C card um, due to the fact that various credentials do expire. Christopher Shannon. Yeah, Chris Shannon. <laughs> Yeah, he was given an answer to me on the background, so I had the question and the answer. So I think that's covered there now. Yeah, okay, sorry. He's the one I ask. Is that okay? <laughs> sorry, but I was, I was, I was finding it funny the trainings asking me a question. But thanks, for, I appreciate it. Uh, Just good to note he's keeping us on the straight and narrow. You know, he's good. He's a good guy. Quinn, yeah. go ahead. Sam um, Greenman's got a question popped up there. The difference between a credential card and a certification card. Just go ahead and spell that out for him. Okay, so a credential card is your leadership qualifications. Okay, right. anything below leadership would be seen as a certification card. Okay, major difference is a credential card expires, um, where a certification card does not have an expiry. All right, man. Um, I guess. Um, uh, sorry, Corin Shine asked, why can I not log into the app with my Nawi account? Um, you should be able to because that's exactly what you use. Uh, if you're asking why you can't log in with your, um, the, the only major difference is you need to use your email. It was decided that we're going to start using emails rather than the actual uh, membership numbers. So at the moment, the app does require you to use your email, not your membership number, but it is exactly the same password as per your core account. Core does allow you to use both membership number as well as email address. So Elaine, uh, um, I believe it's Elaine from uh, Sassine there. You know, he's asking the loaded question. <clears throat> Will the members have the option to certify through the app? That is a, you know, I'll answer that, but you know, that, so everything that we're discussing in today's presentation is something that we are looking at as a Q1. It's, 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 it's a ver what we are discussing today are things that are accessible today or things that will, will be accessible within the first quarter, preferably by the end of January, early February. Something of that, uh, that question right there with the loaded, uh, with the certification process is something that we are looking to building into the application that will be launched at a later date. Correct, Quentin? That is correct. So it is definitely, it is definitely something in the pipeline and it's coming. So yeah, um, the exact date I can't give you, um, but yeah, it's very, very shortly. We're working on it. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I guess with that being said, it's coming up on the hour. Um, hopefully we were able to, uh, answer a lot of the questions here. I want to go ahead and, um, Quint, just thank you for, uh, coming in on this kind of, as this is obviously, I believe from the bottom of my heart, a vital asset to everybody, to all the membership as we go forward. Um, it's something that, you know, it's gotta be a tool that you got to use It's something that will enhance your business. I think that with the dashboard, operating the way it is and getting you guys to the next badges and next levels and stuff like that is something that can greatly enhance uh, the membership here. Go ahead, Quinn, you got a question you want to answer? Um, yeah, I'm just seeing one from Daryl. Um, so he says, uh, Quentin, sorry to keep dodging you on, uh, dodging you on the certifications, but the only certification that has an electronic card attached to it is open water. All others are just list by title, including, for example, master diver. I would think that all also have a digital card or am I confused on this topic? Okay, so Daryl, sorry to, you're definitely confused on this topic. Um, it is every single certification that now we issues has got a digital version of the card as well. Um, the, that's that little blue icon available next to it. Uh, uh, you would have to see if you've actually purchased the digital card um, because it is obviously a purchase attached to it as well. If you buy the digital only NES, it is included. It's actually included in all the NESs at this stage of the game but I think you might be referring to previous certifications before the digital card was available. Those cards is available for the various members to purchase as well. Uh, there is a special currently running, uh, if I'm correct, Angelo, it's still the 31st of December. Uh, it breaks down into the various cost structures, uh, very, very good uh, revenue opportunity for members as well. If you can sell onto your database, your clients uh, at a little bit of a higher cost than what you pay for it, uh, very, very good revenue stream that you can 
pick up there, but it is definitely available. That's not true that it's not, it's only for open water. So, okay, Bill, you got something? Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, uh, we're going on the hour, and I always like to tell people that these are 30 minutes to one hour, so we, it's an hour well spent of people's time. So what I'd like to do is, if it's okay with you, Angelo, I'd like to say thank you to everybody, especially Quentin for donating his time today and all the expertise of developing this app. So um, a reminder, we, we did record today. We will be posting it out. Um, we're looking at one of two options, uh, the new Naui form or our um, redesign of the YouTube for Naui channel. So um, we'll have that out. I'm gonna make a promise by the, by next week, we'll have it out one way or another, and everybody will see it. the last three international recordings will all be there for everybody. And Bill, and my, I mean, we've got the the new Naui forum is up and running. So correct. You know, get in there and start getting active on it. You know, there's a there are other options than Facebook. So get onto the Naui forum, start voicing your stuff. I know the members of Naui, the uh, the Naui executive team, the Naui reps. They're all in on the forum, the Naui training. They're all in there, ready to answer questions, ready, ready to interact. So, Angela, maybe just yeah. the quickest way for the guys to access it is to actually log into their core account. Uh, it is an option available on the menu bar on the left. Uh, it says Naui Community. Gotcha. Right on. Community. Naui Community. Um, Naui Perfect. Community. Here we go. Um, with that, I guess we can kind of check out, man. We're all we're good to go. Sounds great to me. Thanks, Angelo, and thanks, Quinton. And Madison, you're quiet in the background, but we know you're doing all the hard work. Thank you very much. And uh, once again, thanks for tuning in to our Now We Talk International series. Stay tuned for the next one. Thank Bye you. now. Thanks, guys. Thank everybody. Thank you.